What's going on, guys? I'm here in my basement with my good friend, John Flickinger, also known as the Flick Pick. He's visiting right now, and I just took him to see Krampus, something you have a hard time pronouncing, apparently. For some odd <laughs> reason, when I see an A, I think Santa, and then I think it should be an A sound, not a U. Krampus. Krampus Krampus? Anyway, we just saw the new film by Michael Dougherty. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Director of Trick or Treat. A movie I think you should actually watch if you ever get the chance. I think it's a good Halloween horror film. I caught about 20 minutes of it one late night. I do want to revisit it after watching this film just to see if it's better or stands apart from this movie. So Krampus is kind of like the exact opposite of Santa Claus. You make a bad wish. Maybe you ripped up your wish and you threw it into the sky and you were angry and he's going to come and set things straight. But it's not going to be straight in the way that maybe you wanted it to be. Krampus is a Life destroyer. It's almost like Home Alone in a lot of ways. A little kid makes a wish. I wish my family disappear, and then things go wrong. That's true. I never thought of that. That's actually. what I was thinking the whole time. Okay. Yeah. I made my family disappear. Yeah! Not only did the house that the family live in look like the McAllister house in Home Alone, yeah, but the like the reef scene where the camera zooms on the door and the reef's shaking. Exactly. I, I, but I, I like thinking. things like that. I like little influences, and it really kind of gave me that nostalgia vibe for this movie. Another Christmas movie that this was definitely inspired by was uh, by far Gremlins. There's a lot of Gremlins in it. I could see that, yeah. And what I really liked about Krampus is that it's all practical. There's no real CGI in this movie. It's very low budget, bit, so yeah. there's very, very minimal CGI. Just gingerbread men going crazy and destroying shit, but yes. you can't really do a practical gingerbread man running around with a candy cane sword. Not so much, yeah. no. But for the most part, it was all practical, yeah. and I really liked that. There are aspects of it that weren't quite as good as Trick or Treat. I have a certain fondness for Trick or Treat. There there were elements of this film that weren't quite as good, and for me in particular, the narrative. The characters are all fairly unlikable, save for a couple people. The mother, played by Tony Collette, the father, played by Adam Scott, for once not playing the a-hole character. He actually plays the, the hero character. Yeah. And the kid, who yeah. makes the wish that makes everything go bad. Yeah. Also, I didn't mind the grandma. She had like this strange knowledge of things. I thought the grandma was almost the best actor in the film and she was the most intriguing because she had that dark mysterious past you were kind of they were building on throughout the entire film. Yeah, I think I liked it more than you. To say, yeah, I would say you probably did enjoy it more. I tried to like it more. I just really didn't. None of the characters resonated with me. Uh, they did have some redeeming qualities but it just kind of became a little bit repetitive and what this movie is, it's trying to be kind of a horror film and kind of a funny comedy movie. And for me, neither one really was all that amazing, so I was just left in the middle with kind of a mediocre movie that was slightly entertaining. Did you at least find it, like, a, like cozy? Like a movie that maybe you could snuggle up and Co watch? Cozy? I like that. I like that term. Yes, I did feel warm and cozy, except for when demons were invading the house and it was <laughs> cold and arctic yeah. and gingerbread men were killing people, but... I do get what that you're saying. That makes me feel cozy, okay? Yeah, I, I hey. I like wrapping up in a blanket <laughs> and watching murderous death on Christmas. Yeah, I agree. It did It did have that vibe, that Home Alone vibe, that nostalgic yeah. vibe, and I right. think that was the best thing this movie had going for it. I liked it. I like this movie. I, I don't think that it's as good as it could have been. I think there are aspects of it that I didn't quite like. With a movie like this, there's always that scene where the shit hits the fan, and then our actual characters have to accept crazy things. And it's a little rushed. It's hard because you want to get to the meat, like the cool, scary yeah. stuff. And so you want to get there, but there's just parts where you're like, I just can't see them not having psychotic breakdowns right now. Like yes. every single person in this house needs to be like having a psychotic breakdown. And there are yeah. moments like Tony Collette, like backing up against the wall, like, oh my gosh, this is really happening. And they don't really necessarily have the time always to sit there and realize that because all like shit is just flying everywhere once everything starts. The transition between happy family, everyone's at Christmas having fun, not really enjoying each other and arguing to all of a sudden monster horror was a little sloppy. I agree. Things kind of just were skimmed over. And why is it every time an intense situation happens in a horror film, everyone's just like, yeah, that happened, but let's just go to sleep. <laughs> one, one, one guy over there look out the window. If anything bad happens, wake us up. This is why I drink caffeine, Chris, because if Krampus does invade this house tonight, and I'm standing watch, he will not murder us. John thinks it's Krampus that's going to murder him in his sleep tonight. They did address it once, where the father was like, you need to go to bed, and the kid was like, how? But then they all <laughs> fell asleep. Like in the next scene, everyone was just asleep. Things I liked about Krampus. The look, the feel, the music. I really like the score. Same guy who composed for Trick or Treat. The direction overall, I thought, was far better than your average PG-13 horror film. It was also far better than a very limited screened film 
with a very late embargo. Yes. Far better than most of those horror films you would think. Surprisingly, because it kind of had that B-rate vibe going in. And I was actually surprised by the production quality, and it didn't seem as cheesy as I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be like a direct-to-Netflix type movie, and it was surprisingly better. No, I was more anticipating it, I think, than you, just because of my love for mm -hmm. Trick or Treat. I was let down by some of the way that the story went through its story. I don't want to get into spoilers, but there's a lot of jumping around, very fast, very rapid, and I can see it having good replay value, and I can see cult horror fans really liking this movie around Christmas time. I can see myself re-watching it. I'm excited to do so. I was impressed by, as you said, the production quality of an obvious low-budget production. I was impressed by the more prosthetic and actual suits and Krampus himself. But Krampus, the prosthetic mask that he's wearing throughout this movie, the mouth is always like this. For me, it just felt like a very repetitive movie. The characters were inside, they go outside, they come back inside, they go outside, they come back inside. And until like the last 15 minutes of the movie, I just felt like it was a repetitive mess. It almost felt like a movie that had 45 minutes of substance and they dragged it out to that hour and a half. There's only so much you can do with a snowed in blizzard though. The Shining did quite a bit. That's true. That's true. You got me there. But, well, I'm going to retire. Uh, <laughs> take, see you later. Here, take, this, take this with you. <laughs> All right. See you later. Have a good one. You enjoy my channel, John. So what grade would you give this movie overall? I would give this... I would give it a C+. Plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's got a few minutes of quality entertainment. It's a well-executed film for the most part. It's just the script's a little bit repetitive and a little bit messy at times. So going in, though, you, you seem to have, like, you were like, I don't know if I even want to go with you, Chris. Like, I really felt like it'd be like a D-type movie. So it surprised you. Better than expected. Okay. Yeah. My main issue, I think, with this movie is the fact that its actual ending, which I won't spoil, felt very tacked on. It didn't necessarily work for me. In fact, it ended at one point in my head, and I was like, okay, that's... That's whew, that's actually ballsy. And then it went on and on and on, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I get its message, but it just didn't work for me. And that was my major flaw with the movie, actually. And I think it would have benefited from just a slightly higher budget, but they worked with what they had. And I admire that type of indie approach to horror, where they're like, we're going to work with these very limited things and try to make it as entertaining as possible. And for that reason, I'm going to give Krampus a B. Did the very end of this movie, and this isn't a spoiler whatsoever, did it kind of have a Jeepers Creepers vibe? Just a little bit? I was thinking of Jeepers Creepers! When it ended, I was like, Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Where'd you get those eyes? And it, I was like, this is Jeepers Creepers! That's what I was thinking, man! We're the same! Man, this movie did borrow a lot from a lot of other movies. It really did. So guys, I appreciate you watching this video. This is my buddy, John the Flippic. As I said, you can check out his channel in the link below. He does tons of reviews all the time. He's very funny. He's got muscles and, yeah. you know, speaking of <laughs> muscles, John and I are fans of the Rocky franchise and we decided to make our very own tribute to the Rocky training montages and we've been working on that for a day. We shot in one day a really epic training montage and I'm actually really proud of it. It's testosterone driven, it's epic, it's badass. And it's probably the coolest thing I've ever done. Wow, thank you. Yeah. The link for that video is in the description below. It's actually on my Facebook page because it contains the Rocky theme and I couldn't put it on YouTube because of copyright issues. But please, check that out. I hope you guys enjoy it. Subscribe to John. And as always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.